Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello, uh, this is Princess Bola Adilani, the Total Success Coach, welcoming you into Inspired Success, your monthly dose of inspiration power, the program that equips you with the power and inspiration for total success. That is success at work and in life. I thank you so much for tuning in. I cannot believe that it is already the month of December. Where did 2009 go? Anyway, I'm sure that um, you're, you're thankful and you're excited that um, we're wrapping up another year and, um, you know, just excited and thankful for the opportunities that a new year brings us. You know, they say new year, new goals, new dreams and new opportunities. I definitely am excited. I'm thankful for the fact that, you know, um, God saw me through the entire year. I know for many of us... Um, it's been a challenging year, but you know, we need to still be thankful that we're still here. That's the most important thing. There's an adage um, where I come from that says where there's life, there is hope, you know. So just thank God, be thankful for the gift of life, you know. So December is here. This is the season to give, and this is the season um, for um, um, the uh, joy and the celebration of um Christmas. And so I want to just really take this opportunity to um, just wish you, um, you know, very Merry Christmas and to just thank you for um, being with me um, throughout um, the year, um, for spending your time um, and watching this um, broadcast. Thank you so much. So we're going to, going to dive right into our broadcast for today. You will recollect uh, many of you will remember that we began a series about two months ago on Inspired Success called uh, Money Power. Money Power is one of my signature training programs. It teaches the spiritual dimension of financial success. As I always say, there is more to making money than meets the eye. Yes, I say that all the time because it's so true. Think about it for a second. There is more to making money than meets the eye. That means that there is so much more that influences financial success. And success in general in life, um, other than sound um, financial planning and hard work, like we have always been um, told, um, you know, and like our present economic meltdown proves, you know, I mean, you know, that's what the economic meltdown proves. It's not just about hard work and sound financial planning. There are so many other um, intangible factors, factors that I refer to as spiritual factors that um, go a long way in, in, in influencing and impacting financial success. Such factors as beliefs, um, connections, ideas, inventions, dreams, visions, um, favor, goodwill, you know, all these um, really impact financial success to a great degree. And that's what really this series um, kind of teaches all those other principles so that you can uh, apply them into your life and um, hopefully get your financial biz and business life in the place um, you really like it to be. So we started this series um, 
two months ago. We started, um, we laid the foundation of the series with money power. Uh, I beg your pardon, with the connection principle, you know, and we talked about um, on the broadcast um, two months ago when we began about connections and, um, you know, what our connections speak to. And then last month we took it a step further and we looked at exactly how to establish and build those powerful connections. Um, don't forget that um, the videos of these broadcasts uh, available on demand, that means at your convenience. Um, you just need to go onto the website. If you go to my website at royalproclamations.com, there's a link to the whctv.org website where all the videos are, are available on demand so that you can watch um, the videos at your convenience, like I said, and kind of recap and um, some of the broadcasts and what we talked about. So that was what we did two months ago. We started Money Power Connection Principle. Last month, we looked at how to um, establish and how to build powerful connections. And then we're continuing this month um, with um, the Seed Principle. You know, I kind of made a little adjustment in terms of the topic um, this month because I just thought I wanted to bring... Um, uh, I wanted to bring viewers something that was more seasonal and more relevant to where we are, you know. And, um, you know, it's, there's a slight adjustment. I'd earlier announced the belief principle, but that's going to um, come up in, like, um, I believe in February of 2010. This month, we're going to be looking at the seed principle or the giving principle and how really that goes to impact financial success. And then in January, we're going to, in January, we're going to be looking at the visualization principle because that's a month where everybody is setting goals and, you know, planning and all of that. And we're going to look at the visualization principle then and how that impacts, um, you know, our success and the ability to reach our dreams. So please note those, uh, note, note that um, um, slight adjustment to the, to the topics. So this month, we're going to be looking at... Um, the seed principle, or what I call, or what is also called the giving principle, and um, and and how it impacts our financial success. So the seed principle is this: the seed principle teaches that the seed principle teaches that whatever we sow is exactly what we're going to reap. Okay, and basically it says that the there is inherent power. What is a seed? Let me start first with, before I go to what the, prince, the principles um, actually teaches. And what is a seed? A seed is anything with a, an inherent power and ability to reproduce after itself. So I'll take that again. A seed and, is anything with the inherent power and ability once it's sown to reproduce after itself. And so everything in life is a seed. Our time is a seed. Our actions are seeds. Our money is a seed. You know, and um, our words also are seeds. Uh, I'm going to take that again. What is a seed? We're looking at the seed principle today and how that impacts financial success. The seed is anything with the inherent power and ability to reproduce after itself once it is sown provided it is sown in the right climate and on the right ground, the right soil. And then I said that everything in life is a seed. Our words are seeds. Our time is a, a seeds. Our actions and our deeds are seeds. And of course, our money is always a seed. And so the law of seeding says, the law of seeding says that we will reap exactly what you sow. I'm going to take that again. You reap exactly what you sow. Number two, a seed will always yield an harvest, provided it is sown on the right soil and in the right environment. I'll take that again. A seed will always, it will always yield results. It will always bear fruit, provided it is sown on the right soil and in the right environment. So from these two laws, we, would, we can conclude, um, make these deductions from these two laws. 
That is, in order for us to reap money, we must sow money. Because the law of seeding says that you reap exactly what you sow. You cannot sow tomatoes, for example, and expect to reap corn. <laughs> and neither can you sow corn and expect to reap tomato. So if people want to reap money, you want your financial um, life to increase, you want to start getting more financial opportunities, then you must be sowing money. And, you know, unfortunately, this is um, a law that... Um, is so set, is cast in stone, is set, and it's ir irreversible. It's an irreversible law. But many people are attempting to reverse that immutable law. Many people are sowing, you know, um, deeds of kindness, but want to reap it, um, reap financial, uh, reap a financial harvest. Some are just sowing um, um, the right words. We're coming to that. That does have a place, you know, our affirmations and our confessions go a long way in impacting financial success, but also want to do just that. And then um, at the same time, they want to now reap financially, you know, financial opportunities and financial blessings. It doesn't work that way. You cannot reverse this law. So in order for you to be reaping um, financial harvest, financial blessings, financial opportunities in forms of deals, in form of contracts, in form of bonuses, it will come in form of gifts and annuities and bequests. You must be sowing money. And by sowing money, I mean you must be giving money. Now, giving is the vehicle, is the means through which we sow seeds. Giving is the vehicle through which we sow seeds. So in order for you to really now be sowing your financial seeds, you must be giving financially. And don't forget when we're talking about this law of seed, and we said that it would always yield results. When you see, you reap exactly what you sow, and your sowing will always yield re results. Emphasis on the word always. It will always yield results. It will always bear fruit, provided that it's sown on the right soil and sown in the right climate. Okay, so now, you know, for those of us who are saying to us, you know, how do I sow these seeds? Now, I have been sowing, you know, some say, you know, I might be saying to, 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 to themselves, I'm thinking, you know, I have been sowing, I am a giver, I do give seeds, but you know what, it's not coming back to me, I don't see the results. Number one, my number one response to that is how intentional, how purposeful, how result-oriented and how consistent is your giving or is your sowing? I'll take it again. For you to yield, get the results you're looking for, your giving, your seeding must be intentional, it must be purposeful, it must be goal-oriented, and it must be consistent. You know, I'm just going to use the analogy of, um, of a farmer to try and you know, ex explain um, this principle to you because this is really where the principle comes from, really. And we're talking about seeds and sowing and all that. For example, I, I will tell you this. A farmer has a plan, has an intentional way in which they sow their seeds. Number two, they cultivate the ground. They make sure the seed has the right environment, you know, and they're going back to till the ground with expectation that at some point the harvest is going to be produced. That is exactly how also we also sow financial seeds to get the kind of results we're looking for in terms of financial blessings and financial opportunities. We must sow intentionally. We must have a plan. We must sow with expectation. You know, we must sow in the right soil and in the right climate. And then it must be consistent, like I said. And then we can look forward to the harvest. So this is how we do it. What is the right soil, you may be asking? And what is the right climate? Number one, we need to look at the right soil in terms of where you're sowing your seeds. What kind of organizations or people are you giving to? That is so important in your trying, in your, in your 
at in applying this principle, you know. So where are you sowing your seeds? What kind of organization? What are their mission? What is the mission of the organization that you're sowing to? You know, what are their values? Is it, is it a good soil? Is it good ground? Are they good um, organizations? And I'll give you examples of, you know, kind of good organizations or good people to, sh to sow and give to, to a, so that you can get um, a harvest. You know, you, you look at what they're doing. What, what is their mission? Are they, are they supporting and helping people? You know, are they, are they, are they empowering people? What kind of benevolence uh, are they offering to people? And then the individuals also, if you're giving to individuals, what kind of, you know, um, per people are they? What are their values? Where is that money going to be directed? That's very crucial in determining, you know, whether you will get and harvest from your seed. The other thing to look at is that it is the climate, you know, and the climate, it speaks to the values of the people who run the organization you know um you know obviously you can't give money and expect results to an organization that promotes prostitution for example or things that are you know immoral like that you know and so uh, and so look at that look at that in your sowing look at that in your giving you know have a plan and look at the environment look at the values look at the mission of the people or the um, of the organization that you're sowing to, do it consistently. You know, do it with with expectation. Do it um, with in um, deliberately, purposefully, and I, I can assure you that it's going to come back. You know, to you um, in in so many, many, many positive fine ways with so many financial opportunities coming to you. So that's kind of. Um, a gist of uh, and a summary of um, this seed principle today. And I'm just going to run it uh, over uh, with you very quickly. I said it is the season to give. And so we're looking at another um, um, spiritual principle of financial success, which is the giving or what is popularly referred to in faith circles as um, the seed principle. And I, I started by... Um, you know, establishing the fact that everything in life is a seed and that a seed is anything with that inherent power and ability to reproduce after itself, provided it is sown in the right ground and um, in the right climate. And I said that our words, our actions, our money, as well as our, as, as our deeds are really uh, are all seeds. And that whatever we sow, we reap exactly what we sow. So you can't be just sowing good deeds and expecting to be reaping financial blessings. No. In order for you to really improve your financial success and start reaping all these financial opportunities that will come to you in form of all kinds of deals and contracts and promotions and bonuses and bequests and all those kind of gratuities and all those kind of financial um blessings, you know, you must be sowing. You must be sowing financially. And I said, giving is the vehicle through which we sow these seeds, you know. I said, so I said, I also kind of concluded by saying that we need to look at the environment in which we are sowing, and we also need to look at the soil into which we are sowing before we e expect results. We also need to sow or to give intentionally, with expectation, you know, and consistently. And so um, basically that's it for today. That's where we're going to wrap up this program. I want to use this opportunity to really kind of appeal to viewers and um, encourage you to consider our sixth annual Operation Joy to the World um, program as um, a program that's um, worthy of your dollars. Um, this program is a program that... Um, reaches out and um, to men, women, and children in homeless shelters in the inner city. Uh, we go caroling. Uh, we, we donate, um, you know, prepackaged gift items known as baskets of love. And um, this is really something that um, 
worthy, uh, worthy cause to support and really the right soil, like I said, and the right climate to put those, um, the, your dollars, your hard-earned dollars, and I can assure you that, um, you know, you would reap um, a million fold. To learn more information, really, about this outreach and benevolence program, you can vis go onto my website at www.royalproclamations.com um, for more information. The program really literally starts from the beginning of um, the uh, Christmas season and right through to Christmas Eve. And we really take it. The uniqueness about this program is that we really go into the community and have a program for the residents and we just don't drop off you know donations at their doorstep so you can learn more about that at um, www.royalproclamations again this is um, princess bola adilani the total success coach um, wishing you a very merry christmas and uh, thanking you for just giving me the opportunity to speak into your life in um, 2009 I'm so looking forward to our journey together in 2010. And I want to remind you to keep smiling, to keep believing, to keep learning, to keep networking. Keep on keeping on. You're on the winning side. Till I see you again next time, take care. God bless. And uh, once again, Merry Christmas. I'll see you in 2010. God bless. <laughs>